this is Lady Lex UK and this is another Dreams tutorial. Today we're doing another type of switch. Um, now you might be wondering, why am I doing all these switches? Well, uh, they are standard things for lots of types of puzzle games and things where you want your player to interact with your world. Now previously we I've shown you a sound activated switch and also an ordinary one where you walk up to an object, say a chest, uh, it displays uh, a button for you to press, you press the button and the chest opens. All right. In this instance we want to make the player work a little bit harder so we want the player to hold the button down for a set amount of time before the switch will activate. So I'm going to show you uh, this. I'm also going to show you um, a, a similar system but in, instead of holding the button down you have to frantically uh, press the button uh, quickly uh, in order to open up your box or your door or whatever. So for the purposes of uh, this demonstration I've done a very simple animation of a cube rising up the side of another cube. Um, obviously your animation can be completely different, it doesn't have to be this at all. You can do any sort of animation, maybe it's a key turning in a lock or it could be water filling up in a bottle, it could be um, um, a, a meter with a with an, an arrow or something like that. Use your imagination, you can create any sort of uh, animation that you like that will work with this. Um, I've just kept it really simple. So let's demonstrate um, what I've done. So I'll just put that in, into test mode so that you can see. Right, I'm going to hold down the cross button and um, there is this number here at the top here is going to increase as uh, this is just for debug purposes you probably wouldn't need that but you could use that as your meter you don't need animation you could just literally have especially in a futuristic thing uh, you could just have a number gauge uh, so the number goes up so let me hold down the cross button and see what happens there we go once it reached the top it went black fall back to the bottom and turn the light on. So this is a, a one one shot deal for this switch. Uh, it will turn it on and then that, that's it done. Let's just show you that again. This time uh, have a look at the speed of these, these blocks because they are slightly different. And it depends on uh, the method that you want to use. Right then, let's have a look at our microchips. So you can see here I've got a light and this is connected up to a counter. Um, I need this counter to keep the light on um, because this is going to send a pulse when the, the uh, switch is activated and a pulse if I send it to the light would just flick it on quickly and then that would be it done. So in order to permanently turn it on I've got this connected to a counter between uh, my switch and my light. So that's what that counter is doing. Okay, now here is my microchip. Right, we've got another counter here. This counter is acting as the on button for our microchip. Um, I want this on to, at the, right at the very beginning, so I've set that to one to start with. Now you will probably be using this with some sort of trigger zone, uh, so that player walks up to your box or whatever it is and. Um, and uh, it will activate this counter. So all you would do is wire up a trigger zone to the increase count on this counter. Make sure it starts at zero and uh, then that will turn on your microchip uh, with the trigger zone. Uh, be, be wary of that though. Uh, if the player walks out of the trigger zone it's going to turn your microchip off. Um, so, uh, But that might be exactly what you want. Uh, you'll have to play about with it to see. Right, this counter then is turning the power on to our microchip. This is where all our work is. Uh, this is the output of our microchip uh, that is um, uh, saying that our switch is on and it's got a keyframe and a timer attached to it. Uh, the keyframe, all that's doing is changing the color of that cube and this timer is turning off our counter so that it turns off our microchip so you can't um, activate it again. So this is a one shot. 
So once you've activated the switch, it turns the whole thing off um, and you're done. Um, now, the reason I've got a timer rather than just wiring the output directly into the reset on this counter is because if I did that, there wouldn't be enough time between um, it turning uh, turning off, so it activating and turning off. It won't activate this keyframe and it won't activate this light. It'll just immediately turn off. So we just need a slight delay. And this timer has a 0 0.1 second delay uh, built into that so that it will turn on our light, make our uh, block black, and then it will turn itself off. So that's what that is doing. Okay, let's have a look at the microchip. Whoops. Right then, microchip. Some of this is familiar, I am sure. Right, we've got a remote control sensor. Um, as normal, We've selected remote control. We've done that first, so we don't forget. Right, here's our cross button. Uh, our cross button is linked uh, into uh, two objects, two gadgets, a timer and a not gate. So let's look at the timer first. So when you hold the cross button down, it's going to start this timer. This timer is set to 0 0.5 seconds. And it's going to loop round. As long as you're holding that cross button down, it's going to loop round. So it's going to reset itself constantly. So every 0 0.5 seconds, it's going to send a pulse. And it's sending a pulse to this counter here. This is going into the increase count. This count is looking for a count of 10. So as you're holding that cross button down, that's going up. One, two, three, four, every 0 0.5 seconds. Now you can change the speed at which all of this works by changing the number on this counter or the speed of this timer. Either will work. Um, uh, you experimented with it to get it to the speed that you want your uh, animation to work, your the switch to work. I've just got uh, the number display here. Like I said, this is for debug purposes. Um, you, you probably wouldn't need that unless you had like some sort of uh, need to display the number for instead of having an animation, you just had the number being displayed, then you could do that and you wouldn't have to worry about all of these timelines and things. But we're going to worry about the timeline because we want to make it look splendid. Right, here is our counter full output. When the counter is full, that means the switch has been activated. It's reached number 10. And I've put in a node here, so that gives me an output on our microchip, which you saw earlier. The progress, the count progress, is linked to the playhead on this timeline. The timeline is very simple. I've got two frames. The first one is our little red block at the bottom. And our last one is the little red block at the top. When I was making my keyframe, uh, if you're going to be um, raising something up along an edge, uh, it's a really good tip to click on precise move. That allows you to move things uh, in a direction and it doesn't, doesn't change direction. So it's really easy to uh, move it in a nice straight line. So remember that as a tip. So there's our timeline. Uh, that's got a linear blend type. And there we go. So that's that's what that is doing. That is playing our timeline based on the count progress, which is a percentage. So it's going to go 10. 20, 30, 40, 50 as it goes through the count. And then this t this playhead is going to go 10, 20, 30, 40. It's going to go along here, which is going to, in turn, move your block up. And as you notice, it moved it up in little stages, 10, 20, 30, 40. So it's a little jerky. Now, the uh, cross button is also connected to this not gate. This not gate is also connected to the timeline. This time it's connected to the restart. So when you let go of the cross button, it's just going to move that playhead right back to the beginning. 
and therefore it will drop down to the to the bottom and that's what that chip is doing there we go very simple now let's um look at the other one which was a little smoother this uses a slightly different method of activating our timeline everything else is exactly the same the only difference here is i am sending the count progress to a calculator timesing it by 10 so i'll just show you that so there we go it's going to multiply it by 10 and that result is going into the playback speed of our timeline it's going into here and what this does is create a smoother a smoother playback um for for the rise of um our block so you might want to try that method uh, instead of um instead of moving the progress bar along jerkily uh, this will create a smooth um run for the, the block but you'd need to experiment to see which is good for your animation because uh, different animations will act slightly differently to those two methods right over here we have uh, something slightly different this time instead of holding the button down uh, we're gonna have to keep pressing so if I was to hold the button down you'll notice it goes up and then comes straight back down again so if I press the button I keep pressing it's gonna rise up if I stop it starts to drop down so it's fighting with you so you need to speed up and it gets to the top and then activates your switch so let's have a look at this exactly the same as the other one so here is our, our microchip exactly the same as before um, this time though we have an extra little timer right um we've got some extra things in there that i don't need right so uh our cross button is going directly into our counter it's not going through the timer it's going directly into the counter the counter is still looking for 10. So that's increasing our count. When we press the cross button, it's increasing our count. This timer here is on a 0.2 second loop. As you can see, when the timer is finished, it's looping right round and then resetting itself. So it's on a 0.2 second loop. And when it reaches uh, its finished pulse, every, every time it goes around that loop, it's going to decrease the count on our counter so every 0.2 seconds that's going to make that counter go down so you'll have to press that cross button quicker than this timer is actually removing it 0.2 seconds is probably a decent amount of time um, for the player to, to have to keep pressing that button um, when the counter is full when we reach the switch we are going to reset this counter this counter is the counter that's turned on this timer in the first place so this will just stop the timer so it will stop uh, reducing that counter uh, and then otherwise everything is the same so our counter full is going into our node and our count progress is going into our timeline onto the playhead like we did with the first example so that's it um, that's how that works uh, everything is good now then I've got an example let's come out of here we'll just say, say that in case I did something right come out of here and I have an example uh, this is slightly different actually I've done a slightly different method so here we have 
um, a sofa. Uh, I go up to it and I have this display on the bottom left hand corner of my screen with a triangle on it. And if I press triangle, these little dots come up. So I know I had to hold it. And there we go, it's turned on our switch. That was quite quick, so let's rewind it and go again. So I can hold it, I can let go. So this is a hold button with this type of animation. Right, so how have I done this one? So you'll recognize this, this is very similar. Uh, so we've got a trigger zone here. Trigger zone is going into our counter. Um, and, um, trigger zone is activating our microchip. Um, the keyframe, whoops. Which is turning everything off. Right, okay, so. We have our microchip. Here is our whole button microchip. And here is our timeline. Right, so in this, this is uh, using uh, lots of number uh, text yeah, gadgets. I'm just using their uh, backgrounds. So I've put a space in. You need to put a space in, even though there's no text in this, you need to put a space in, otherwise it doesn't work. And then you shrunk this down so you've got uh, the circles that you want. And I've got uh, the text display here, and I've got a black circle here. So what you do is you just lay um, that, that down like that, and then you place these around like that. Uh, number them so that you know which order they are all in. Then you create keyframes which um, turn on. So uh, this keyframe here turns on number one. This keyframe here, um, that one is one and two. That's one, two, and three is being turned on. You just um, activate them in turn uh, along this keyframe, so that that's you, that's your animation is the, the lights going all the way on, all the way around. Right. So uh, when you press the the triangle button in. That's turning the power onto your timeline. When you are not pressing the triangle button, that's restarting the timeline. So this is a really simple way of doing it. We, we haven't got a counter or anything like that going on. Um, we are just powering on our timeline and restarting our timeline. So um, as you press the triangle button, it is moving through your animation and then when you let go of the triangle button it restarts the animation very simple no need for counters or anything like that um, and there's your there's your button uh, this keyframe here um, you've got one for turning on that light You've got a counter for turning on the light, etc. Exactly the same as you did uh, previously. Again, this is a one-shot, one-shot deal for turning on the light. So there you go. Hold buttons and uh, constant presses. I hope that was useful for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in your dreams.